I've lived through some of the transformations that you see in Eindhoven. Uh, my first trip to Eindhoven was in the 70s. That was the heydays of Philips. And I went to, uh, as a young student to NetLab. Philips NetLab translated is Philips Physics Laboratory. And there I did some very fundamental work in magnetism, uh, which goes into a disk drive. That's why I was involved with disk drive. And it was really inspiring when you go to NetLab, the sprawling campus, you know, were most inspirational. Then I went there again in 1995-96. And as you heard from Mayer, that was a time when they went through severe transition and transformation. I went there because of colleagues I have there who are good friends. Uh, Professor Keith Shuhama Imink, who is well known for his work on the CDs and the DVDs. Uh, they were in transformation, but it's something we did not see because Singapore was in the throes of industrialization, going high technology with the disk drives, starting our semiconductor industry. It was a different era for us and quite different from them. But we have transitioned from then on to something else. So has Eindhoven. I've been to Eindhoven many times, but the last trip I went there was two and a half years ago. By then, Sync, NetLab was no more NetLab, but it was before. It is what you see today, truly inspirational. How they have transformed from a manufacturing industry, we started with Philips 125 years ago with the light bulb, to what it is today. Today, Philips strive as multiple companies which they have spun out, NXP, ASML, etc. But I think they continue to transform, but I think Eindhoven has rejuvenated, has transformed. But what about us in Singapore? I think in Singapore we see ourselves through the tra transformation that we have seen for ourselves in the last 50 years. And you know, in the last 50 years, we have moved from you know, a country whose GDP is less than a billion dollars to what we are today. We have transformed ourselves through industrialization, through going through high technology. We invested in R&D. And today, we are on the cusp of a new S-curve as we see it. Today, of course, we worry because we do not know what the future is for us, very much like what Eindhoven continues to explore. So I, as a start to this conversation, I thought, you know, uh, uh, I should ask uh, Mayor how he sees things for us in Singapore. You know, sometimes, you know, when you see it, look at ourselves, you become very myopic. You know, I can see the transformation in Eindhoven. So perhaps, you know, he could share with us what he sees in us, the potential that we have for ourselves going into the future as we are concerned about whether we will survive as a city. Well, what you can see here, I've, oh, the first time I was here in 1992, and then I've been here a couple of times. What you can see nowadays, yesterday I was there in the Marine Bay, and it was wonderful. I really enjoyed it. There was a light show going on and that kind of things, and it was, well, the atmosphere was great. It was really great. You are doing a great job. With the bring in the green, it makes it livable cities. Over the last couple of days, a week, the last week I've been in Taipei, in Shanghai, in Nanjing, and now here in Singapore, by far, by far, it's the best city of all. I think you are in the top three of the most livable cities in the world. And that is something you achieved. The question is, what are the threats of the future? You did something, I've been here before, to look, is there something to do on collaboration? It was very hard for me to, to find something because we are a high-tech region and a design, a creative region, but I couldn't find any connection about um, creativity. It was very hard to find something. And on high tech, it was difficult as well. You got a lot of headquarters here. You got a re reliable government, a reliable system on uh, intellectual property and that kind of thing. That makes you great. You are doing great things, but it's more or less, as, uh, well, not only, but it's mainly dominated by the harbor, the, uh, the airport, and the service industry. And I think if you want to be more independent in the future, then you have to do something about your added value on your own. And that you not only rely on what, what the United States is bringing here, their corporates. So there must be something about self-shaping industry that you can do things self, and that needs, therefore you need research, and therefore you need specific research, and therefore you need, of course, creativity. And, what, and the last point is something we, I think we are very much advanced when you look to the design side. I spoke a couple of weeks ago with the um, director of the largest research institute in the world. It's Fraunhofer. And the director, manager director said to me, we as German, it's a German institute, 
Frau Nova. He said, we, make, we improve cars year by year. But you are doing something dif different. You, you design, you make new cars, which we can improve year by year. So there's something about the Dutch guys, it's not only in Eindhoven, but it, they can look out of the box and I think that's necessary. You did t t tremendous things. When I was walking there with the forest and seeing this light show, well, that's imagination. But it must be, it must be maybe a little bit more broader. This is Einstein. Einstein once said, imagination is more important than knowledge. And that's something that for Asian people, knowledge is so central. It's facts, figures, knowledge. But Einstein himself said, Imagination is more important than knowledge because imagination is bringing you a maybe possibility of the future. And if you don't have an imagination, then, then you cannot give any added value to the knowledge that is existing.